We're going to bet that everyone watching this video spent a good amount of time imagining all of the cool stuff they wish they could do. But we almost always don't act on these thoughts due to a lack of money, balls, or both. With that in mind, we thought it'd be funny to list 10 people who said, screw you, I've got one life, and I'm just gonna go with it. People like. Number 10. The guy who paid off his student loan in cash. We're guessing that half of the people watching this video have a millstone made of student debt hanging around their neck. There's just something depressing about realizing you owe someone $80,000 and how, thanks to interest, you're likely to owe them much more for the rest of your life. Alex Kenjeev was having approximately none of that when he decided to pay off his entire loan in one go in cash. Kenjeev had been dragging his feels on his $190,000 loan until he finally scraped together the scratch to pay off the final $114,000 in one go. If you're wondering how Kenjeev did this, well, essentially, he walked into the bank, threw the money down on the table, and then sat back while he watched the bank manager work out what to do. Almost three hours later, Kenjeev was entirely debt free. Number 9. Ripping up a mortgage repayment. Like student loans, mortgages are a cause of great frustration since paying double what your house is actually worth over the course of 20 years while never once being allowed to slip up isn't most people's idea of fun. We can imagine that many people who are locked into paying a mortgage have dreamed of telling their bank to do one before the image of their family being forced into homelessness makes them just, well, get back to work. Charles Pretty Boy Floyd, though, he had no such qualms because while he didn't rip up his own mortgage papers, he ripped up other people's. Floyd was an infamous bank robber from early 1900s America. To endear himself to the public, whenever he broke into a bank, he would make an effort to tear up as many mortgage papers as he could to free ordinary people from their debt. Number 8. Playing Monopoly with Real Money If you've ever played Monopoly and bankrupted your own mother with those crafty brown properties, you've no doubt felt your mind wander to thoughts of playing the game with real money. Maybe you've played it while wagering shots or perhaps with a few dollars staked on the eventual winner, but the real dream is to play with huge wads of cash. Well, the great train robbers actually did that. After committing one of the single most daring crimes in history, the robbers responsible hid in a farm. While waiting for things to die down, the robbers played Monopoly with the money that they'd just stolen. Number 7. Winning a gold medal without even trying There's a famous saying that nothing worthwhile is ever easy. Well, we have another saying. Sometimes it totally is. Just ask Wyndham Halswell, the only man in history to win an Olympic gold medal without even trying. During the 1908 London Olympics, Halswell was involved in a rather controversial 400-meter race in which Halswell was blocked by an American racer. Seeing this, the uh, umpire immediately declared the race void, meaning it had to be re-ran. However, every other racer, with the exception of Halswell, refused to run, meaning Halswell was free to gently jog to the finish line without incidents and collect his gold medal. Sure, he was still a good enough runner to get that far in the first place, but if Halswell could win a gold medal without trying, well, maybe you could too. Number 6. Stopping a mugging just like a superhero would In a world that is seemingly full of crime and corruption, you'd all be lying if you said you hadn't once imagined what it would be like to be Batman, to stop a crime, to save a life, and then make the police look stupid in the process. Well, we're here to inform you that not only has this happened, but the person responsible also got a cool nickname. The story goes that a group of unarmed, undercover police officers were investigating a disturbance when they happened upon three men armed with an assortment of weapons who were terrorizing a lady in her home. Outnumbered and almost certainly about to be stabbed or bludgeoned to death, the police officers prayed for help, which came in the form of a katana-wielding stranger who stopped all three men, saved everyone involved, and then quickly disappeared into the night. Of course, as a reward for saving their lives, the police rewarded the samurai stranger by putting out a warrant for his arrest. And that's how Samurai Stranger met his new arch nemesis, Captain By the Book. Number 5. Riding a Bear since quoting Anchorman stopped being funny about eight seconds after the film was released, please head to the comments to type the quote you're clearly all thinking about. Now then, the bear is one of the most terrifying and dangerous animals out there. Riding one would take balls so dense the earth could collapse inwards, and you'd also need to just be absolutely insane. Just ask John Mitten. Mitten was a noted eccentric from England who, when bored one day, bought a freaking bear and rode it around his house for no other reason than to prove that he could. Number 4. Refusing a King's Offer be honest, you've all thought about how cool it would be to turn down someone way more famous and powerful than yourself just to say that you did. 
It's like buying Bill Gates a drink. Sure, he could afford to buy the entire brewery, but you'll always be able to tell people that Bill Gates is totally in your pocket. Well, Jimmy Hurst did something just like that with the King of England. Hurst was well regarded as being a rather odd individual, doing things like training a bull to act as a horse and hunting foxes with pigs. These stories so interested the current King of England that he sent Hurst a personal invitation to see him, which Hurst immediately turned down because he was teaching an otter to fish. If that wasn't cool enough, when the king sent yet another invitation that Hurst accepted, a noble had the audacity to laugh at Hurst's mannerisms, to which Hurst responded by throwing a glass of water in his face. Number 3. Gaining tons of weight, knowing you'll just lose it all. Losing weight is tough, and it takes years of sustained effort and sacrifice. Gaining weight, on the other hand, is as simple as not doing a damn thing while cramming pizza down your throat. For most people, gaining weight isn't a choice. but what if it was? What if someone offered you the chance to eat as much as you wanted for six months, then guaranteed that six months after, you'd have a body that looked like it was carved from recently varnished wood? Well, you'd probably jump on that offer in a shot, right? Well, that's exactly what Drew Manning did. A personal trainer by profession, Drew intentionally gained 70 pounds, losing his chiseled physique and ability to pay for cabs by flexing, and gained sagging man breasts in their place. Why? Well, so he could lose it all again to show anyone that they could do it if they just put their mind to it. Dubbed fit to fat to fit, Drew spent six months eating whatever the hell he wanted, then another six months exercising, and then collected a sweet-ass book deal and national coverage at the same time. Yes, this took a lot of effort on Drew's part, but you have to admit that being paid to do nothing for half a year is something everyone has dreamed of at least once. Number 2. Having Infinite Beer Beer is awesome, except for the part where it costs money. Once funds run dry, then the party ends. Except if you're a Nobel-winning scientist. After Niels Bohr, science badass, won a Nobel Prize in 1922, the Carlsberg Brewery gave him a gift in recognition of his accomplishments. A house right next to their main brewery, featuring a tap connecting to their main pipeline that gave Bohr an infinite supply of ice-cold beer. And if you were thinking that science was still for nerds, think again. Number 1. Telling your boss to screw off in the coolest way possible Of all the things people around the world imagine on a day-to-day -day basis, punching their boss in the face and quitting while giving everyone the middle finger ranks among the most popular. Which is why I would like to share Jordan Anderson's letter, perhaps the greatest example of telling your boss to get lost that exists. Now, first things first, Anderson was a slave, so he already had a fairly good reason to hate his boss. After being freed, imagine his surprise when his ex-owner wrote him a letter basically begging him to come back and work on his farm. With his old boss by the balls, Anderson decided to go for the jugular and wrote him a letter agreeing to come back to work, but only if his boss paid him $11,680 in back wages for all of the unpaid work that he'd done as a slave. That comes to about $170,000 in today's money, which might help explain why Anderson's master never responded. Said letter went the 1860s version of viral, and Anderson's masterful takedown of his jackass former boss is regarded as one of the finest burns in history, and the first and only recognized case of sunglasses appearing from nowhere to explode onto someone's face. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out, that is linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.